And it is the thing that um, when I am down and out and I am just like all messed up about something and I've tried everything else that I, I try doing my yoga practice or go dance or it's like the thing that I know will always just Shock change out of my it. state like that. Hey, this is Susan Blanton, and I want to quickly jump in with a reminder that the Create Happy Meditations app is almost here. In this app, we are unveiling my Moment Makers Happy Method, where you can learn how to create a life of happiness, abundance, peace, purpose, and say yes to life. And it starts with calming your mind and creating the best meditation for your own personal needs. I know, I know you have been waiting a long time, but it's been a big project for me. And like with big projects, you may have some healing and learning to do along the way, and I sure did. So pardon the delays. If you want to get on the waiting list, go to www.createhappynow.com and go to the app tab and click on the sign up button there. It's super informative. Learn how to create your own meditation that works for you. And there's more inside with options to learn even more about how to discover who you really are and how to navigate the law of attraction and manifest your happy life. Welcome to the Create Happy Now podcast, dedicated to helping you start your journey to discover true happiness. Join me, your host, Susan Blanton, weekly as we explore the transformation stories and words of wisdom from our Masters of Happiness with tips you can start applying today to create happy now. Welcome to the Create Happy Now podcast and get ready to be inspired by our next guest, Nathan Schultz. He is the embodiment of passion, health, and rhythm, a true fan of the three Ds, dips, dogs, and dancing. With two decades of dedication to the art of yoga, Nathan has not only mastered the practice, but has also been a certified teacher for the past eight years. But that's not all. He's not just about yoga. He's also about breath work and is a Qigong instructor, bringing a holistic approach to well being. In the midst of pursuing a Five Rhythms Dance certification, Nathan has seamlessly blended his love of movement and mindfulness. But his expertise doesn't stop there. With seven years of experience in executive coaching, he has been a guiding force for leaders across various fields, specializing in leadership, performance, and career transitions. Nathan's coaching prowess is backed by certification from CTI Coactive, the world's largest and most renowned coaching training institute. Having made the shift from the corporate world, Nathan recently planted roots in Asheville, North Carolina. After two decades in the bustling city of New York City and a year and a half of nomadic adventures around the globe, get ready to dive into a conversation filled with wisdom, wellness, and a sprinkle of dance magic as we welcome our incredible guest, Nathan Schultz, to the Create Happy Now podcast. Well, Nathan, thank you so much for joining us today, and I really want to jump right into letting the listeners know about your hero's journey because it's so juicy and I Uh, think a lot of people can relate to you. So uh, welcome to Create Happy Now. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, let's let's dive in. Um, So hero's journey. um, Yeah, about 10 years ago, I had a dark night of the soul, a rock Mm -hmm. bottom moment um in the same month my wife at the time announced a sudden divorce oh uh (laughs) yeah it was just kind of like hey there's by the way there's uh there's all these problems and i'm not i'm not sure that they can be fixed and that same month i got a phone call from my dad and (laughs) oh that one's hitting me a little bit. It's still you're still feel the sting, yeah. It's... Yeah. Um, he announced a terminal cancer that oh. same month, and so I went through both oh of those things over 
Yeah. <laughs> a lot of grief there. Loss. Yes. That's that's yeah. a the, that's a double dipping there. Mm. Well, the trip the there was actually a triple dip, which is oh. <laughs> which I'm getting to, which is so um I spent a year trying to fix myself, trying to fix the relationship, the marriage. And my dad was passing through that time. It was rough because I really wasn't present to be able to really be with him. Cause I was like, Oh my God, I gotta fix this thing. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so those things kind of like came to a conclusion in, in the course of about 12 months, it was like, we've tried everything. This mm. divorce is happening. So that was done. And then my dad passed right around the same time. Oh. And um, I had, I was like in a new job. I had gotten a new boss. I had to be out for a couple of times because he had like a um, a stroke sort of thing a couple of weeks mm. before the pass. And, um, and, and actually I was in a job that I shouldn't have been in. I was like the farthest away from my genius zone. And so it was like- Like pressure and stress. And yeah. yeah. And I couldn't, grief. I couldn't hold on to the thing anymore because I wasn't good at it. <laughs> so I lost it and I got fired. Mm. And, um, for me, that was like a total ego annihilation. Like I, I just, I couldn't believe that that actually happened to me. Like one of those things, let alone all three of those things. Yeah. Uh, I had grown up in more of a traditional, classic, Midwestern, suburban, we have like the perfect family kind of thing, mm -hmm. and we're all achievers, and we do well, and go to these schools, and get the right jobs, and... Are you like my that. brother or something? What's um, that? I said, are you <laughs> like my brother or something? Did we grow up in the same family? Yeah. <laughs> Midwest, family, perfect, you know, got yeah. all the education it's, or whatever. It's kind of, it's, I mean, it's kind of a, it's, it, it's kind of a, a, a motif, mm -hmm. um, you know, so a lot of, a lot of people can identify with it, which I'm actually happy about now because um, it helps people to hear this. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so. I went through a whole thing after I was like, you know, literally I couldn't function for. I bet not. Three months. Like I, I would, I, you know, I. How I do you want to get out of bed? <laughs> exactly. I was, I, at the time I was kind of an A type personality, the achiever mm. and my mind was like, I have to fix myself and get a job. You know, well, and, that's what you grew up. You know, yeah. you've got to be the provider. You got to, you know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps and keep going for no matter yeah. what, you know? Yeah. Um, so for, I, for better or for worse, probably fortunately, I was unable to even get, you know, to like pull myself together to, you know, apply for an interview or whatever I may have done at the time. But, um, you know, I was crying for several hours a day <sighs> and what, where I found salvation, um, and really the only thing I could do to survive was just like, get my ass to, to yoga class. Um, so fortunately, yeah. Yeah. That's a blessing that you didn't turn to something negative. Well, you know, I was parallel pathing some um, vice-like activities with, um, with you know, like with drinking, with tindering, mm -hmm. uh, which you know, dating apps weren't around before I was um, before I was married. So I kind of went off. I it, while I was doing yoga, I had this whole kind of like party thing going on, and it was about after. Um, I don't know, six months of really going deep down into my spiritual path. Um, and that actually became my full-time job. So like the A-type ego part of me was like, I have to crush something right now. So, so I knew I couldn't get a job, but then I found that this, like the yoga opened up my sort of spiritual lens. And then I was like, whoa, I need to go figure out how this whole other world works. Yeah. So literally I was spending, you know, um, five to eight hours a day doing transformation related activities. 
mm. multiple yoga classes, Qigong class, going to five rhythms, ecstatic dance. Um, my mentor was a Chinese medicine doctor uh, doing sort of like wisdom coaching. And I love Chinese medicine. Together. It's so good. <laughs> so good. Um, and more, you know, more stuff. But that was kind of like the big stuff. And um do, do you mind if I ask you yeah. like, you know, when when you have I guess I went through all that, you know, similarly, but then I had an added financial crisis at the same time. Yeah. You know, um, mm. I, there was a time where I couldn't find a job. I was like just yeah, I was working for a caterer, you know, just doing whatever I could whenever I could. Yeah. I didn't have you know, I, I ended up being bankrupt and, and on food stamps and having to go to the food bank and get help with my, um, my finances, you know, pay, pay some electric pills and things like that. And my parents helped a little bit, but, um, it, it was that added stress because Jenna went through a, a divorce as well. Um, my father passed mm. this is parallel. Here. Yep. <laughs> yeah, a little similar story. Though. Yeah, but the financial was um almost greater than the rest of the stress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get that. That's a that's a that's a double doozy right there. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, for me, fortunately, I had a I had a big blessing in that in the divorce separation process, we sold our apartment that we had shared and made a lot of money from that investment. So oh, okay. um, that kind of like, uh, yeah, fueled, yeah, that fueled my nine months of what I call fun employment or spiritual employment. And um, after nine months, you know, it was maybe like six months into all of this spiritual activity, like the whole, like the universe actually opened up to me. And if for the first time I understood what, um, <laughs> Yeah, it touches me. It I understood what that word means, you know, and mm. what what people mean when they say like they're lucky or you know like um, fell into place. I just fell into my lap. Yeah, yeah, exact exactly. Like things were happening for me, and like the saying "follow your bliss" <laughs> actually made sense to me. I was like, oh, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, literally, I was just it waking works. up every day doing whatever would fill me with joy, like mm -hmm. whatever would make me feel good. I was taking care of myself to the maximum after, you know, 15 years of, I really beat myself up hard in corporate America. I was working nights. I was working. Mm -hmm. nights. Um, I, it wasn't my purpose or my gift. And so I, I was miserable in doing it. Um, towards towards the tail end i mean it was good in the beginning with a lot of growth and learning but then after that kind of the growth and learning staved off i just didn't have any place to be there mm -hmm. um, so yeah i had some repair work to do um forget where i was going with that <laughs> <That's> okay <laughs> yeah. well you um so you financially were doing okay yeah. Um, and then you were following your bliss, things are falling into place. And so where, where was the upturn where you yes. kind of found your purpose and your drive to do the, the next thing, you know, what yes. was, what was your next mission? Um, so yeah. And, uh, so I had done a lot of healing work. I had done, two yoga teacher trainings and a lot of other trainings and workshops and things. And so I'd done a lot of healing. And when the universe opened, two jobs came to me um, at once. They're both um, CMO, chief marketing officer positions. And I took both of them kind of uh, both part-time and I ended up having like, you know, 150% allocation. It was, it was crazy. Wow. But but those two things sort of led me to my purpose. Um, and they both kind of let me know what I like and what I don't like. Mm -hmm. um, one of them was sort of a yoga business. And I learned, uh, I was like, oh, that's my passion. Like, maybe that's my thing. No, I got <laughs> in there. I got in the industry. I was like, yes, I love yoga. And it's not my purpose in career. The other job 
was about transforming a company around conscious purpose and being a voice for good in the industry. And my um, business partner, who is the CEO, she was talking about her personal purpose statement. Yeah. And at first I was like, what are you talking about? Like, what is a purpose statement? And after a while that sunk in and I found myself at a yoga retreat in Costa Rica at the end of the year, which I was doing every year to kind of like um, fill myself up and reward myself for a hard year's work. And in the opening circle, people are like, hey, what's your intention? And I said, everybody's like, oh, I want to let go of stress. I was like, I'm here to find my purpose. Mm -hmm. And everybody laughed at me like they thought <laughs> they kind of they thought that it was like funny because it was such a lofty goal or it's like, how are you going to do that through this yoga retreat kind of thing? And um, after a three hour grueling Thai massage in, deep in the jungle by a master who literally like ripped my limbs apart after he like kind of broke me unconscious through some weird like ninja move. Really? Um, I, I felt that like I was meeting God in that moment and wow. he's kept each one's of one of my limbs and lightning went through my body. And, uh, I think it was me just talking to my higher self or soul at the mm -hmm. time. I like, like who knows, but, it, but, but what I said is I'm here to serve. And that just yeah hit. That was like, oh <laughs> yeah. And, and to, now to me, that's like common, like common. Uh, that that would be obvious, but yeah, where I came from in corporate America, I was just like, oh, I'm here to make money, and sometime down the road, I'll cut a check for a charity, and that's kind of how I'll give back mm -hmm. once I'm like really rich from that, and. So that was the first purpose seed was that epiphany. I coupled that with um, the, the, uh, the transformation job led us to a conference called Conscious Capitalism, yeah. which was founded by the CEO of Whole Foods at the time, the founder, um, John Mackey. And he was on stage talking about spiritual intelligence being one of the four types of leadership intelligence. Yeah. So right there, I was like, I can't believe people are talking about this in a Marriott ballroom wearing suits. Like, I didn't know that there was any kind of spirituality involved in business. I taught mindfulness at Amazon. What? Yes. Yes. I mean, that wasn't my job there, but yeah. they uh, had a, a group of people who trained and taught mindfulness. And so I was one of them and we would, uh, whenever they would put a request in, then it was sent out and you would, you know, take it and we would have yeah. regular classes and things like that. And so, yeah, I, I taught mindfulness and it was amazing. And I'm like, oh. yes, yeah. like, yes, it needs to be in every corporation. Um, and, and I could notice how Amazon treated their employees. You know, they were very mindful. I mean, yeah. it, that was something that they, they were very considerate of um, as much as a big corporation and, can so do. It was <laughs> these kinds of workplaces I didn't even know existed that really inspired me. And so when I got home from the conference, I read his book called Conscious Capitalism. And I had- I have that book. Yeah, the, the yellow one, and I burst out crying. It was like another soul-piercing moment where it was mm -hmm. like, holy shit, this is my calling. Yeah. Like he was talking about connecting the dots in his life and then figuring out what his purpose was. And, and then I had that same moment in that moment reading it. <laughs> yes, yes. Um. So then I was like, what am I going to do within this world of conscious capitalism and the way that I narrowed it down was I looked back and I and I found that over the nine months of fun employment, what I had naturally done was just coach people around me for fun and for free. Mm -hmm. Like we were on workshop retreat breaks and I would just start business coaching people. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I didn't know that coaching was a profession. 
And what I also discovered was I had an intuition come through. And by the way, before that intuition came through, I didn't even know what intuition was. You were learning oh. like what this, who you really are. Yeah. Yes. Right. Because when you discover, and, and this is what I teach in my happy method mm. is when, when you discover and you really go down the rabbit hole of learning who you really are and how you relate to everything, the all that is, um, then it's a lot easier to start that self love yeah. campaign. Yeah. You know, and, and then things really start rolling and then you, you get, you get introduced to your intuition really strong and, yeah. and then you're like, I do this, I go do that. And sometimes it's so strong. You, you stop, it stops you in your tracks and you're like, I'm sorry, I have to stop right now. And I have to go do this right now. Yeah. Uh, like I have to go climb this mountain. Excuse yeah. me. <laughs> I'll be back later, but I got to go do this and you cannot not do it. Uh, sometimes the, the, it's that strong of a, mm. of a nudge, you know, it's a, I had one day, uh, I arrived at work, um, and my intuition said, you need to go into your boss and tell him you're going to take the rest of the day off. I'm like, why just mm. do it. Uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, it was literally like that kind of conversation. So I went into him, made up something and I left and I'm like, okay, now what? Like, we'll just go, go get a massage. I'm like, what? Yeah, I, what? Like, I'm just taking yeah. off that just to go get, yeah, and then just drive around the lake and look at properties. Why? You know, I don't know. It, there was no why, just do it. So I did it and I enjoyed myself. And then come to find out, I end up living right off, you know, the lake now. <laughs> so Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, those kind of like interstitial impulses throughout the day, throughout the week, I didn't have that mastery back then. Mm -hmm. Right. It was, it was more like I needed like a hammer and a chisel to like get, you know, maybe a signal or, but now that's kind of the way that I'm able to use it is like, what is this impulse here? Like, I don't know, but I'm going to listen to it. It doesn't make any sense, but I'm going to go follow it to, to what you're saying. It's helped me find things too. Like, yeah. like, where is this, you know? And they'll just say, go, go to here. And so I go and they're like, well, it's still not there. Look up. Oh, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I had a couple people when I, I went on a retreat recently and somebody lost their glasses and somebody lost their keys. And I said, follow your intuition, just be quiet and see what it says you to do. And they both came back to me and said, oh my gosh, I did what you said and I found them. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's powerful. I so, did a whole series on intuition <laughs> on my podcast. So, so powerful. So where did that lead you then? So, you know, I kind of had, um, I had, I had all this information and, and I just felt I had to start my own business to start helping people knowing what I know and helping people with, with their problems. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I just started my own coaching business and I've been working on that now for the last nine years. Oh, wow. you know? It's more yeah. like, uh, it's actually around seven formally, it, um, not counting kind of the informal stuff that happened before then. Yeah. And, um, you know, now my, my business is my purpose and it reveals to me always what's the next layer that I need to go to. Like what's, what's the deeper layer for me to go into, to, for, to continue to live my purpose. Cause I, I believe that, you know, purpose can once you sort of get one level, there's another level for you to get to. Absolutely. And so what, what would you recommend to people who are at that precipice? You know, they're, I just can't take working in corporate America anymore. And I know something else is out there for me. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people are in different aspects, you know, maybe they already know their purpose, but they're still afraid to let go of mm. the purse strings of corporate. Yeah. And they're, they're fearing, well, 
can doing my purpose and, and serving others support me in the way that I'm accustomed, you know, uh, I'm, I'm fearing to lose my level of lifestyle and, you know, that that's that one last hurdle of fear that they have to, um, either let go of, or they're having to do both at the same time for quite some time. And, and of course you can get burnt out and say, you know what, I forget it. I I'm just going to have to work because I'm not getting this off the ground or you're getting off the ground so much. It's, it's still not there, but it's, it's making your current job suffer because your focus isn't there. It's, you want to be over here, you know? Um, what do you recommend for people who are kind of in that, you know, you can can imagine the, the scales, you know, you're like, no, I don't know. And, and getting over that fear. Yeah. I, I, um, you know, I, it's a great question and I have seen this before. I mean, the half of my coaching practice is career transition, um, coaching. And I have found you know, there's usually two camps of people. There's there's the camp where they're like they they just they get you know, for, with the work that we do and sort of my um, four step method. Mm-hmm. They get the epiphany and then they just kind of they figure out what's the you know what's the job or business that they're gonna go make to go do it and then mm-hmm. they just start doing that and burn the ships and execute <laughs> and they they have the money to do that. So that's oh, okay. kind of like a very clear cut case, right? Mm -hmm. So the second camp is more of um, the folks that I think that you're referring to where they're still holding the the legacy job, like kind of the historical job while at the same time trying to launch their new thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, I recommend getting support to go through that process because that is very hard to do. Um, so I, I would recommend getting support to really understand like the new thing, if it's faltering, like, is there, does it need to be course corrected somehow? Like, you know, oftentimes people step into something new and they're not a master at that, right? Mm-hmm. They don't have the expertise yet so, and and they don't always have entrepreneurial experience, right? Especially mm-hmm. if they're coming from corporate. So getting somebody to kind of help guide them where to validate or help them create a valid plan to just make sure is their strategy right? Um, mm-hmm. The strategy is right. And then it's just emotions and it's fear. Well, what I found is coaching work is amazing for that, right? Because it's a space to kind of help you work through the fear, work through um, what I call uh, saboteurs that get in the way. And that's that's one of the pieces that in the four-step program that we work through, which is like, Mm -hmm. what are the blocks that get in your way? It's either saboteurs, voices that come in and like say that you can't do it or you're not good enough or whatever it might be, or it's, or it's kind of behavioral habits that are getting in the way, which could be like diet, nutrition, sleep, like people just don't have the fuel, the energy to hold the old job while doing their... It takes a lot of energy. It, it takes a lot. And so... Mm-hmm. Mental and physical. It re- it just requires support. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and however, I do love the technique of for those who either they have financial challenges or they're not super sure about their new venture it allows them time to make sure that they really have the new venture right before they drop the the daytime job and go pursue the the new business, the new job, um, whatever it is. And I think that, you know, getting, getting your intuition muscle, it's probably the most important thing so that you can recognize this is it. This is it. Yes. And, and then when you know that is it, then that creates more natural drive. You're not making yourself do something. You just cannot not do it. Yes. You know, you just, uh, you make it happen because it has to happen. It's, it's, it's that mountain you have to climb and, and there's no going back. You know, you know, you have to do it, even though you still have the, uh, the other things you, you know, that you can't be eventually on your deathbed going, 
Yes. Well, I never did yes. it. Yes. Yeah. I, I would argue that inner knowing is the most important piece mm -hmm. of the process. Because without yeah. that, you don't have something greater than you to tether to, to tether to, to pull you out of the past and into the future, out of your, uh, what could be karmic work in your life into sort of your dharma, into your yeah. destiny. But when people feel that in their body, it, it, it's really like turbo fuel. It is. And, and if it's, if it's not turbo fuel, like if it's not something that you think about all the time, then it's not, it's not, um, it's not for, that's not it. Yeah. You know, that's the litmus test is you have to be obsessed with it mentally about it. And, you know, you're, every time you have a conversation with somebody, it will come up because you can't, it's going to bubble up because it's, it's on your conscience all the time. It's what you yeah. want to do. It's what's in your bones. It's like, yeah. you know, um, and sometimes it takes a while before you figure out what that is. I mean, my son's kicking himself because he's 31 and he hasn't figured out what he wants to do. And I go, I didn't figure it out until I was like close to being 50. So don't yeah. worry about it. Exactly. You know? But um, yeah, get get your intuition in check um first and um and 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 the thing is is that if you learn to find joy in everything you may not need that it may you just find joy where you are mm. or you know the position that you're in it might transform it into something you enjoy um or at least you can enjoy it until <laughs> yes so so the um i mean the other the other half of what i do is leadership coaching mm -hmm. and my method there is actually for the first four weeks i work with somebody is the same method that i use with career changers it's the same four-step method of purpose plan path and performance mm -hmm. that first piece the purpose is something that for people in your current job, you don't need to find another job. But if you understand your purpose or who you are at your core, if you lead from that place, just your daily leadership, you can, that might be it for you. Uh, you might be able to find the joy that you're talking about and fulfillment, knowing that you're leading from the core of who you are that you are gifting people with your presence. You're gifting people with your gifts every day, same job, but you just have a new framework and you have acknowledgement of what are your gifts to give everybody at, um, at that job. Exactly. I mean, it, if you are on your spiritual journey, you are kind of in a sense of what they call a light worker. You're, you're like a lighthouse. Mm. You're a beam of lighthouse on, 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 on the shore and, you know, the ship's passing, you're the light mm. wherever you are. You don't have to, to move and be something else. You can just be that light wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whoever you're with, be that light, be it for yourself, be your own light. And then just be that light and, and people, not for the purpose of people noticing, but it, it feels so much better it feels really good to be in that space. Yeah. Um, I will have to say not everybody um, likes it. <laughs> um, but what I found is most people um, at least eventually warm up to that. Um, but but it, it's just so much more joyous and you end up meeting amazing people and when you meet somebody else who is like-minded you're so giddy mm. you just I, I have you experienced that like when you find somebody they're like you too you feel this way like you feel like i like it you just you're just like oh, i'm so excited and you just, oh, you just absolutely <laughs> yeah for me you that, light up it feels like home it yes. feels like it feels like home and it feels mm. like somebody mm. gets me and it feels yes. like i can really reveal all of myself to somebody and I yes. can kind of share 
really what I'm into, like what I stay up late reading or YouTubing or, you know, like whatever it and, might be. And you can't stop learning. You just, you're, you just can't, I, I mean, my library, I'll, I'll, if I run out of books, I'll start rereading them again because, <laughs> <laughs> um, or I'll listen to a, a podcast or I'll, I'll be able, what, what I do in the morning is I wake up in the morning, if I'm not ready to get out of bed and I want to kind of just have my subconscious be, you know, I'll, I'll listen to one of my favorite, you know, like Alan Watts or, uh, Abraham Hicks or, um, uh, Ram Dass, you know, I'll, I'll yeah. listen to them and their lectures and it just, it's so, mm -hmm. and sometimes it wakes me up. I'm like, Oh, I know that's new. <laughs> yeah. I can remember that, you know, I'm going to utilize that. So, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, you, you, it's, it's, you can't stop learning. You want to know more and more and more you, you, yeah. it becomes an addiction. Yeah. <laughs> you want to learn more. And then you, you also tap in more and more to your own inner wisdom and start marching to the beat of your own drum. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and that's reassuring that you don't feel like you have to be like everybody else to be accepted. You accept yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of power comes from that. Just inner knowing of an acceptance of who you are. You don't need validation from the outside. I got something re some recent analogy that made so much sense uh, that um, it, it gave me a, like a tool um, so, and it, so basically, uh, let me give you an example. Okay. What's your favorite color, Nathan? Orange. Orange. Oh, mine too. <laughs> that looks pink from here though. Well, but yeah. anyway, it does. Um, so, yeah. all right. So orange is your favorite color. Yeah. All right. So, um, so imagine that, okay, your favorite color. And, and I say, Mark, I just hate that blue shirt you're wearing. Yeah. Well, you're like, huh, it's orange. What are you talking about? You know, yeah. it's not even close to being blue. And if you if if you are that assure have that assurance about yourself and someone comes in and 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 says something negative to you, you can look at them like they're saying you have a blue shirt when you have an orange shirt on. Yeah. And you, you don't get enveloped in like, and you take it personally or get offended. You're just like, well, that's just ridiculous. <laughs> so, and, and so yeah. I just keep thinking if someone's saying something negative, which really doesn't have to me anymore, but if they confront me about something that I'm just like, mm -mm, I remember that, okay, I have my favorite shirt on and they're telling me that they don't like another shirt that I'm not even wearing. Yeah. Um, cause it's not me. It, that it's untrue. And, um, so that, that was a, a huge epiphany for me because I would go, even if I would, <laughs> cause I would be like, I am, I'm wearing a blue shirt. This isn't orange. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, Oh my God. Was, okay. I'll go put on a blue shirt oh, and then God. you can really be. Yeah. Um, yeah. but mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are out there that, um, have, they believe everything that someone says to them because they're not standing in their own yes. belief and their own validation. They have to validate themselves, not seek it outside of themselves. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 I wasn't there. I, I wasn't there seven years ago. I had to work through that over seven years yeah. and, uh, I, I appreciated like when you, do, when you actually, we kind of just did it. You were like, oh, it looks pink. And I was like, oh, I'm like, nope, it's hot orange. Like, this is my favorite shirt. Like, I love <laughs> it, you know? Yeah. And just like. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, well, Nathan, can you tell the listeners what you've got going? Um, well, first of all, what is your favorite quote? Let's get to that first. Ah, yeah. 
My favorite quote is by Mark Twain. Love Mark Twain. And he wrote, the two most important days of your life are the day that you were born and the day that you find out why. Wow. Yeah, it just gave me, put makes gives me the uh, the goosebumps here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, so what is your happy hack? Happy hack. Um, I love jumping in cold water. And it is the thing that um when I am down and out and I am just like all messed up about something and I've tried everything else that I, I try doing my yoga practice or go dance or it's like the thing that I know will always just shock you out of it. State like that. Mm. Uh, I will jump in cold water. And usually that looks like, you know, I'm at home, I'm working, I have to be prepared for a meeting. I don't have time to go to um, the sauna house here in Asheville where they have a cold plunge and a sauna. And, yeah. you know, I do that in my leisure time. And I don't have time to go drive 40 minutes to my favorite river here and jump into that ice cold water. Um, but what I can do is in seven minutes, I can fill up my bathtub with icy cold water and I can just sit in it for a couple of minutes and, uh, and, you know, make sure I get my head under there. And by the and when I get out, sometimes I'll do it like three times because I can only last sometimes a minute, two minutes, three minutes or whatever. So I'll do I'll try to do that like rotation three, three times, take a little break in between. Um, I just feel like amazing. I feel happy. I feel like giddy, like you were talking about. Um, and I think I don't people exactly find that hard to is, imagine. But, but what's that? <laughs> I said, I think people have, find that hard to imagine. Um, but I've heard, um, uh, have you heard of Andrew Huberman? Yes. Love Huberman. He talks yes, about that. He talks about that. And um, yeah, I, I think I would have to have something that I'd jump into. I, I, I would get P PTSD watching the tub fill and go, I, I just, like, <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. you know, I just like, just push me into the water yeah. and then, uh, that, that's it's a, good. It's like, you know, it's like finding your new career. It, it, it is a journey. Um, and so I was resistant in the very beginning. I got turned on to it in my Kundalini yoga teacher training, where it's part of that mystic tradition. Like Wim Hof kind of. Uh, well, it's we get up at 4 a.m. to do our sadhana yoga practice. And before that, we're supposed to take a cold shower. And so I got trained that way where it was just 30 seconds cold shower. Then it was a minute and then it was two minutes. And so after kind of getting the training wheels with yeah. like cold shower buildup, yeah. then I was able to get into the full submerging, get into the tub jump into the river, jump into the cold plunge at the bathhouse. It must be like coffee you know because when yeah. you first try coffee it's like ew yeah and then you're like no and then you're like oh this isn't so bad and then you're like oh i need my coffee and yes. i don't care if it's a bad cup of coffee i yeah. need my coffee and Give i'll it drink it black me. i don't care you know that you know uh so <laughs> yep <laughs> um uh. Yep, so that's, that's an complete. awesome happy hack. Nobody has ever mentioned that. So um, really, I'm so happy. Oh. I, I assumed I was like, oh, this is so vanilla. Like, I'm sure they've all heard oh. it. But it's well, what's people have heard of it. But not, it. Yeah, nobody's given that as their happy hack. Um, <laughs> yeah, Good. so that that's awesome. Thank you for mentioning that. And I'll try to do the, the cold shower like at the end in, you know, in my shower that way. Um, and I think we're thinking about putting a cold plunge because we, we, we're getting the, we have a hot tub. We're going to put in a sauna and I think we're going to add a cold plunge too. Ooh, there you go. Yeah. The, the hydrotherapy back and forth, hot, cold, hot, hot, cold rest in between. So the body can reset mm -hmm. and flush itself. Uh, yes. That's powerful because essentially all of the resources in the body go towards the heart and then you turn temperatures and then they go to the extremities. Yes. And that back and forth creates literally a, a pump and a valve mm -hmm. in the system to flush the system. Well, and it helps with your lymphatic. Yeah. That doesn't have a pump 
And so, you know, trampoline yep. or dry brushing or something like that can help. Or there's even lymphatic massage that you can yes. get. Um, but that's Absolutely. super important because if you're a sedentary in any way, it's not getting pumped and then you're full of toxins and then they're not getting out. So, so I got a lymphatic massage recently and she's like, she's like, I'm like, Hey, how she's like, you're doing really good. Like you're all set. Kind of like I didn't need the massage because <laughs> this practice yeah. had really kind of taken care of my lymph. Yes. Yes. Um, and it's a lymphatic. I, I had to have one, um, after a surgery that I had and, um, and it's very, light like it yeah. almost feels like they're not doing anything yeah. like what well, what's this gonna do but um but then i noticed later that you know it i the puffiness was gone and of course then i was like going to the bathroom more and so it, it definitely does work um but that's super critical for health is your lymphatic system so um you know do your research on that um Okay, so tell us what uh, the listeners have in store if they reach out to you. Yes, I've got um, several things going on, um, including a program and some freebies. Um, I'll start with the program. So, you know, a lot of around what we talked about today, purpose and career, that's my flagship program. Um, and I'm launching the next cohort on January 30th. Um, it's a five-week program. It's the four-step method, purpose, plan, path, performance. And, um, you know, it gives you kind of the community, the coach to help pull you through. It gives you the epiphany to help you really feel in your body, what is my calling? What is my thing? Yeah. And then, you know, through the planning process, we make it a reality. We make it tangible. We make it functional. We make it we set you up to execute it and make it actually happen. Um, that is uh, a program I'm the most proud of. And that's, that's what I would offer people today. Um, if they are, if they're in two camps of career changers, they're either you've tried a bunch of stuff and it hasn't worked or you're feeling stuck, you're feeling inertia and you don't have the gusto to pull yourself out of that while you know that there's something else out there for you. This will um, this will speak to both camps that are that are there. Awesome. So that's the um, that's kind of like the program that I have. And then for freebies, um, I love just offering what I offering my gifts to people. So you can go to my website, elevatewithpurpose.com. Right here. You can um, get a free download for a movement and breath work practice. These are some of my greatest practices that I've done for, for myself that pulled me out of like the COVID funk. Mm -hmm. I bottled that up. So you can get some great, uh, a great reset with that short practice. Um, you can follow along with me in the video. And then um, what was the other thing? I, I have a form on my website that you can fill out. It's a consultation form and I'll give you an hour of my time to awesome. help you with whatever you've got going on. Um, and just mention the podcast and, and we'll make sure that we get you an hour. And you're going to be featured on my app, the Create Happy Meditations app. Woo -woo! Yes. Yes. I can't wait to, um, to, to share my Qigong practices on that app. It's, um, there's such beautiful practices that, you know, you can do at home. And my favorite is doing them when I'm in nature. It's like you go for a hike and you you whip out some Qigong moves. Like everything becomes 10x. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. I'm so excited about that. But um, thank you so much, Nathan, for joining us today. Um, it was so much fun. And um, I would love to have you back again. And I look forward to continuing working with you and maybe collaborating and yeah. you know so I would love you. that thank you so much for having me it's a lot of fun and I can't wait to meet your community and to help them any way I can awesome great thank you so much take care bye now bye -bye. thanks for listening to this episode of the create happy now podcast Please be sure to subscribe, and if you are watching on YouTube, hit that notification bell. If you have a topic to suggest, please leave a comment below.
Catch the Create Happy Now podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Podbean, Spotify, Audible, iHeartRadio, Player FM, Listen Notes, and Podchaser. Check out other YouTube videos on the Create Happy Now YouTube channel. And if you want more, check down below for resources, courses, and events, or go to www.createhappynow.com. 